So today I'm in a lower sixth double lesson. Um, this term we've been studying mechanics all term, so that's the physics of force and motion. Um, and today we are trying to measure the acceleration due to gravity. And as demonstrated by Galileo many years ago, objects, even whatever their mass is, fall exactly together. So there is a consistent acceleration. And this is known as small g in physics, and it's an important um, quantity that determines a lot of the interactions of everyday life. Okay, three, two, one, three, four, five. We are measuring the time period for 20 oscillations. That's 8.05 seconds. And then we're going to put that into our spreadsheet and get an average and then calculate g. We're using a pendulum and a bob and essentially we're measuring the time, the period taken for a swing and there's a given equation that shows the relationship very nicely and we're going to plot our data, find the uncertainties and find G and see how close we get. Okay, how long is that? 0 0.65 seconds. What we're doing is we're getting different steel ball bearings and dropping them from a variety of heights and measuring how long it takes them to hit the ground. Three, two, one, and then from this you can calculate g, the acceleration due to gravity, because it should be, I think as Mr Ingram has said, constant for all the sizes of balls, so they should all hit the ground at roughly the same time. A really good graph of how the trolley went down the slope. What we're actually looking for today is not so much which value of g we get, but the method of how we calculate g, and more importantly, how certain we are of g. Excellent results you've got here, Margaret, because um, we can see he's got a really nice straight line here, which shows that our uncertainty of what the actual gradient is is going to be very small. Almost every physics lesson that we do here will involve practical work. Here, each pupil has spent the last two lessons designing their experiments, um, so they're all doing slightly different experiments, so it helped for me to talk to the pupils individually, um, give them a few tips, uh, explain what would be more efficient for collecting data and what would be more accurate and so on and as a result the students learn to work quite independently.